So in this video, we're going to discuss why Coach Tibbs deserves to get a big contract extension for the work he's been putting in with these New York Knicks. I'm going to give you the reasons why I find that the Knicks need to move fast before the bag goes up anymore. So let's talk about it, man. Yeah. You now rock it with the most popping YouTube channel on the net when it comes to talking this Knicks talk. I am the objective fan, straight out of Kings County, New York City's finest. You know the vibes, y'all. Listen, yo, I know a lot of you guys still may be hurt. You know, we didn't get the job done in the playoffs, but good news is I think that we're on the right track. I also did a pod. Make sure you go check it out where I talked about how I believe why this upcoming season will be our year. And it starts this summer with taking care of business and bringing back that man you see in the in the corner of the screen right here the top right corner coach tibbs we have to get the job done stop playing the bag is only going to go up i say the same thing needs to be done with brunson i'll probably do another video on that be sure to look out for that but jalen brunson he's saying he doesn't he's not concerned with being resigned right now but I think that the Knicks need to strike while the iron is hot because, hey, the Knicks mess around and win the championship next year. The bag, I repeat, will go up. But before we even get going, hold on, let me jump back into regular mode. Be sure to join the Discord. You see the barcode on the screen. Knicks tape madness. We have great conversation, great talks. Be sure to join the Discord. Without further ado, we're going to jump into research mode. Okay. So, salute to Christian Winfield. He has an article on Daily News where he says that it should be a no-brainer for the Knicks to give Coach Tibbs a contract extension. And I agree. He says Tom Thibodeau, he's up for the contract extension, right? And, you know, they reached the number two seed in the East. Salute to the Knicks for getting to the number two seed in the East. No one picked the Knicks to be number two seed in the East. Only the delusional Knicks fans, but salute to the delusional Knicks fans. They Y'all got this one right. You guys... Reasoning may not have been, you know, so on point, but definitely the results came in. He got us there, right? Okay, cool. And we have, of course, we had a rash of injuries. I'm getting to that. Of course, you know, the playoffs ended with a loss, unfortunately, to the Pacers, but that's life. You win some, you lose some. And when you don't have your group, things are, you know, going to be very difficult. But Coach Tibbs got us to a game seven in the second round. So you got to give him the praise for that. Obviously, I'm not too up to speed with it was before he was here, but coach of the year, got the team to the playoffs, got the team to the second round, and you know, barring injuries, could have went further, right? And so the players are definitely behind him. Check this out. Under Coach Tibbs, and salute to Christian for, for breaking this down. The Brunson, he averaged basically 29 points a game, 28 points, 70 roundup. Josh Hart, he was a triple-double machine, definitely had like six triple-doubles within the course of like 10 games. Something crazy like that. Dante DiVincenzo, he, of course, he set the new three-point record. Isaiah Hartstein basically played himself into a bag. Facts. And Miles Big Bride became a household name. So, uh, so first off, salute to old media holding us down. Looks like they're going to continue doing that into the offseason. But definitely, I will say that New York has definitely been on Coach Tiz's back. So, yeah, we talked about the 50 wins, right? If you talk about a little bit about the fines, I mean... If you want to pull up the next season, right, this season, let's let's look at the amount of games missed. Now, I don't have the exact stat in terms of um, where they stand in injuries. I'm pretty sure it's high. But look at the rock. They had literally 26 players in that pretty much had a spot on the roster at some point throughout the season. Now, some of these guys are two-way guys. They, some of these guys may have never played. But basically, all these guys you see here, Definitely. Oh, actually, they did check it to a game. So the 26 guys listed on the official roster basically played at least a minute in each game, right? So look, let's let's go backwards. Let's show you the, the work that this man has done. So we're going to go back a season. And let's see how many players played last year, right? And remember, this is before the 65 game minimum and all that standard that they created. But look, only 17 players. Look at the difference in a year. Right? 17 guys, right? Versus you go to 2024, you have 26. So he's basically had 
to do more with less, even though there's more players. The reason why there's more players is because you had on a 10-day contract. Shane Milton, they wound up bringing in towards the end of the year. Yakite, they wound up bringing up towards the end of the year. Dylan Windler, Windler was on a two-way contract. Jacob Toppin was on a two-way contract. Ryan Arkidiakono was eventually traded, right? So with all the trades, all of the two-way contracts, the Knicks have had more guys than they did last year. And he literally defied the odds. Look at how many guys played over 68 games. You have five guys. Miles McBride, Hart, and Dante, Josh Hart. Only one starter entering the season qualified under the 68-game feat. The rest of the guys, Precious Atoue, he who were traded, he would have fit into this mold, but he was traded into the Knicks. So, of course, he doesn't meet the qualification, right? Of course, Julius Randle, he played 46 games. Jericho Sims, just 45 games. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, 31 games with the surgery, right? Let's, let's, look, let's go back. This is why I love the, the reference, right? This is why we get into research mode. Look at this. Look at last year, how many guys played over 60, 68 games or 65 games. Let's do 64 games. He, he had literally eight players over 64 games. Go back to 2024, you only got five players over that amount. So you have more guys with consistency. And then you had a lot of guys, a couple of guys in the 50s. 59 for Mitch Robinson. Now, you know Mitchell Robinson is a, is a walking injury. He's not going to give you that much time. So Coach Tibbs definitely defied the odds this year, right? Knicks made a lot of trades as well, right? And, you know, two big trades. So I'm, we're talking about key rotation guys. So you have R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, right? Consistent rotational guys. Two of those guys, consistent starters, traded for... Guys coming in, OG Ananobi, right? Vincenzo, of course, was upgraded into the starting lineup. But he had a lot of moving parts. And also, salute to Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart playing 81 games. But big salute to Dante for, for going over up to 81 games. So, Coach Tibbs had a lot to work with in terms of things not being consistent. And to, to bring it back to consistency, Coach Tibbs brings that to the Knicks. One of the big things when he first came here, I'm going to pull up the list because we in research mode. Bam. You know, I'm a beast on these, on these research mode streets, right? When you look at the, let's look at the level of stability. So when you talk about the 2020s, right? Coach Tibbs came in the 2020, 2021 season, right? Up until the 2024 season, he has a plus 500 record. Is it the greatest record in history? No, but it's still plus 500 because we had that one year where we didn't make the playoffs. But three out of four seasons, we made the playoffs. Salute to Coach Tibbs. Now, the reason why this is major and big is because prior to that, when you look at 220 and backwards, right, look at the coaches. We have Mike Miller, who was actually a filling coach because Dave Fisdell got fired. So Dave Fisdell was 21 and 83. That's, that's terrible, right? Jeff Hornacek, 60 and 104. That's bad, right? Kurt Rammers didn't even make it that long. He was 9 and 19, but he was replacing Derek Fisher. And Devin Fisher was 40 and 96. First off, I think New York, we learned our lesson, never bring in any Laker guys to do a New York job, right? Even though Coach, even though Phil Jackson was a New York guy originally, some of you guys might not remember that. That was before my time too, but I, I do, you know, I am somewhat of a researcher. Phil Jackson did, was a New York guy, don't get it twisted, but he went to LA. Once he went to LA, don't bring these LA guys to New York. Big mistake. Derek Fisher, 40, 96. Now, Mike Woodson was the only coach that had stability. He had a plus 500 record, 109 to 79, and he was 7 and 10 in the playoffs. So I believe the 7 and 10 in the playoffs is the reason why Mike Wilson, you know, kind of got the axe. Now, and Phil Jackson coming in too. Phil Jackson wanted to bring in Derek Fisher because he wanted to run triangle. Stupid. They should have kept Mike Wilson. This Mike Wilson point is very important because don't make the same Mike Wilson mistake. Look at what happens after they got rid of Mike Wilson. You get all these guys that I just named off. Coach Tibbs has won more games than all of these coaches combined, pretty much. Hold on, let me fact check myself. Yep, 40, 60, 9. He has won more games than all of these coaches combined post-Woodson. So when you get a guy like a Mike Woodson, do not let them go. This is your opportunity, New York, to sustain this for another four years. And then from that point forward, you assess where you are. All of the successful teams, for the most part, 
have coaches that have been there a while. You don't want to make moves in the coaching because now you're going to change the guy that's in the kitchen cooking up the ingredients. And I think that Coach Tibbs has given you the most consistency you've had in, li- in, in over a decade. Why would you get rid of that, right? He's also, when you talk about his four years in franchise in the franchise, right, how's Coach Tibbs fourth in coaching wins? Right behind Pat Rowley, Jeff Van Gundy. No, I'm sorry, he's fifth. Joe Lapchek, I'm not, this is way before my time. I'm not that old, sorry. Ben Hoseman's before my time, but he's the most winningest coach in Knicks history, so I'm very familiar with him. He also managed to win the two championships, right? Pat Rowley got a coach of the year. Of course, Red Holtzman, Red Holtzman got a coach of the year as well to go with the two, the two championships. He's all, they, both he and Rowley are top 10 coaches all times, right, in NBA history. So Coach Tibbs is in great company. Um, I think you build on a consistency. Now, I know some of you guys are going to knock his playoff record. Coach Tibbs is, is sub-500 in the playoffs. But give him another season, he'll be post-500. I guarantee it. And so Coach Tibbs is trend, you know, his trajectory is going in the right way. I think that it only makes sense to bring him back. He has the most success, even more than Mike Woodson, because Mike Woodson only was with the Knicks for about three seasons. So I think that you got to go with the guy who has been giving you the success that you hadn't had. He also has an identity. These guys play like the 90s Knicks, but in a modern way. These guys crash in the glass dominating the offensive rebounding, top five in rebounding, top 10 in offensive and defensive rating in the league, right? Uh, one of four teams that has that are top 10 in both of those categories. The Knicks have definitely did their work and they're on the right path. Listen, when you look at the Celtics, people look at the Celtics and say, hey, the Celtics have success, but you fail to realize that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown has been getting their butt kicked Every year, and I do think they're going to get their butt kicked in the 2024 playoffs too, but I digress. I'm not sure when this video is going to come out, nor am I sure where Boston will be when you're watching it, but I guarantee you that if they do win the championship, it's going to be some sort of calamity. I'm just going to say that, but but Boston Celtics have been crashing and burning for many years, and hey, maybe this is their year. Point is, they didn't start to this year, right? So you, if you bring in a new coach, New York City, you're going to have to start. Coach Tibbs wants to be here, right? It says also the Knicks want to lock him in. I have an article, a quote from Shams. He says the Knicks very much want to lock in Tom Thibodeau for the long term. And it wouldn't be surprised if it's anywhere near eight figures, right? And then Tom Thibodeau, he says that the Knicks have been great to me. Uh, this is where I want to be. So it only makes sense, y'all. I'm doing this video for the people who don't want Coach Tibbs. People say he don't make adjustments. I'm in, you know, I'm going to jump outside of research mode and I'm going to wrap up. So people say Coach Tibbs doesn't make adjustments. That's not true. One of the adjustments he made was late in the season, especially when OG and Anobi went down, was he went with Miles McBride in the starting lineup with the Nova boys. Why? To create more space and to make them faster. And you don't really sacrifice rebounding because Josh Hart, all he did was just pick up his rebounding efforts. And you didn't have a bona fide power forward. That was an adjustment. He also made that adjustment in game five of the Pacers series, and that led to a win. So don't look at the shortcoming in a, as a failure or as something to detour us from making the right choice and bringing Coach Tibbs back. That's all for this video. I think I drove the point home enough. Don't want to make this video too long, man. But definitely take the time to join the Discord. Right, You can scan the QR code on the screen. Go to theobjectivenicksfan.com. Click join Discord. Get up in the server. Me and my man Sam, we got it rocking. We want you to get up in there so you can definitely check us out, what we're talking about. Join the discussion. The discussion never stops. We talk the Knicks 365, seven days a week. Give you 50 minutes, I give you the Knicks. That's the podcast on Mondays. Be sure to check out the channel. Every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will drop a podcast. So with that being said, until next time, let's go Knicks.